how is lockdown treating you all? <laughs> it's good. Um, I'm actually just, I've been actually loving it, really. I must just say that um, I've been enjoying spending time at home with the kids and yes. making wonderful meals and actually spending some quality time together. I'm managing to get to some little chores and little odd projects and things. So it's actually been really great. Yeah, it's actually like time given, you know, if you take the opportunity. Yes. Because yes. like we're not all in the same house at the same time. I know it's the same with my family. Yeah. And Andrew, how yeah. is lockdown treating you there? Yeah, it's also been good. It's also same as Janine. It's just nice to have the house full of people that you love and I know. be able to okay. connect in and and the nice thing is that I like everyone who's living in my house. So Yes, no <laughs> one's killing each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's oh, great. that's great. Let's hope that. it continues that way, hey? Yes, amen. <laughs> well, we just want to say a quick shout out to um, all of our Redemption Church family that may be watching this recording. We just thought that we would put something together um, because um, I think lockdown has been extended for us. And, you know, there really is something really powerful about worship. And that's the one thing that we all three have in common is I think this call upon our lives to worship. I thought my t-shirt was very appropriate today, although I see it back to print in the camera. It says yes. late <laughs> But um, mm. so anyway, I thought we could go ahead with just a chat around um, actually the topic of the healing power of worship. So there is something um, about, there's something powerful about worship, about bringing the presence of God into your immediate home, into your situation. Um, just, I think it has the ability to change the entire atmosphere. And of course, we know that worship, it doesn't change God, but it changes us. It changes mm. our perspective on things. Mm. So I think the more people that I speak to um, in this lockdown uh, season are struggling with their emotions. So struggling with anxiety, struggling with depression, struggling with like a heaviness. And every day is different from one day to the next. So we know that obviously our emotions and our feelings are completely unstable. But one thing that is stable and is always true and never changes is firstly the word of God. And um, secondly, who he is in our lives. And I think that worship is something that God has given us that um, we can bring into our homes. We can become aware of. And that can actually help us every single day to change the way that we feel and even change our perspective on things. Although maybe the situation, well, lockdown right now is not going to change for us. So um, I've invited two of our amazing worship leaders from Redemption Church, Andrew, who is, um, has been with us for a long time, since the beginning, actually, Andrew. Um, and you're actually a teacher, full-time teacher at a Jewish school. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to just hear um, and to hear you share a little bit about worship and what it's done in your life and just the healing quality and power that it has, especially with what we're going through now. So do you just want to share with us a little bit um, around that, um, how worship can change even the state of your being, your well-being? Mm. Yeah, thanks, Anne. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I um, I was reminded of of times when I've been able to just play my instrument and to allow the Spirit of God to to move through my playing. And I've I've been privileged enough to uh, hear wonderful testimonies from people who have really felt a healing presence through the music. And that's, it reminds us of, that, of the, the story in, in the Bible where David played the harp for Saul. So Saul is tormented by a, by a spirit and he calls for David to play. Now there's no mention there of David even singing. We, all we read is that he's playing his instrument. And 
So I went and I look at again at this because I know we're, we're, we're feeling different things right now. We're, our emotions are up and down and, and there's nothing wrong with having our emotions. It's are we making decisions based on how we feel? And that's, that's the catch. That's the problem that we're going to face. So I dug a little deeper into that, into that story. And um, I was drawn to two words specifically. I've actually written them down. And um, the first word is spirit. And the second word is refresh. So being, being the teacher that I am, I've, I've gone and I've, I've dug into the Hebrew behind it and just try to get a little more understanding of, of what was actually happening at that time. And so the word for spirit is ruach. And the word for refresh is ravach. And interestingly is that both these words have the exact same three letters. So there's a connection. And so ruach means breath, wind, spirit. And ravach means to be relieved, to breathe easily, to be spacious. Wow. So when David played, Saul didn't experience a refreshing, like he went for a refreshing shower or he had a refreshing cup of tea. <laughs> he had a spiritual refreshing. He had a, a, a mental refreshing because that, that spirit was lifted off of him when, Saul, when, when David played. Um, he, was, he was relieved. He felt a relieving. He felt... I can breathe again. Uh, there, was a, there was a space that he felt after David had played. And I think that's exactly what, what worship does for us, is it allows us to just breathe. It allows us to feel a bit of space around us. We can get very claustrophobic in our spirit, in our soul, in our, in our emotions. When you feel like you're being constricted, and when that music comes through, and that's for me has always been a, a, a wonderful thing, is I don't necessarily have to be singing a song. For me personally, I love to just put on instrumental music. I love mm. to just play. And just that presence through the music, because we're, we're emotional beings, we're spiritual beings, and music is spiritual. Music speaks to our spirit, and that's why it's so powerful. Um, in this, in this time, I've also been, been aware of, well, God, where are you? Are, are, are you actually, do you actually know what's going on? Do you know how I'm feeling? Um, I've actually had, I mean, a few days ago, I had a bit of a breakdown. I, I, I really, I lost it with myself. Um, I took my wife into my room and I said, I'm not coping. Uh, <laughs> I think we've all had one of those. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know that, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coping. <laughs> but I had to. So I had to start by saying to I'm not angry with you, mm -hmm. with myself because I'm I'm allowing all this stuff to yeah. get. And I said some horrible things, but that that outlet, and I was reminded that. Uh, in this time, my wife is not always in the same room as me, but she's always around. So I'm always conscious of her being there. And if I call out to her, and if she's listening, she will answer and she'll reply. So I'm conscious of her. And so I've reminded myself to be more God conscious. Because when I and I call out to him, he will always answer. Because he is always to me. Yes. He's not in some other room or on the other end of the garden. He's always with me. Oh, good. And that reminder, that reminder that no matter how I'm feeling, he's here, he's present. And when I allow him, to move in me, and for me, that's through music. I'll put some music on, and I'll just allow myself to breathe. Okay. Mm. Oh, good. Wow. 
I was reminded again in, in our morning devotion that my emotions are okay and there is grace for my emotion. There's, a, there's grace for how I'm feeling. I'm allowed to feel like this. I'm allowed to be happy. I'm allowed to be frustrated. I'm allowed to be uh, stressed. But what do I do with that is the key. Mm. If I allow myself to dwell in that place, uh, unfortunately, I heard a, a podcast two days ago about, oh, it was just, I just felt so depressed afterwards because it was all about the financial situation. And I thought, these are all facts. Yes, you might be educated, but I felt so down afterwards because, gosh, if I dwell there, Things are looking so bad. Yeah, yeah. But I say, no, my God is bigger than that. Mm. My God is more powerful than any financial institution mm. or Amen. Amen. Yeah. And and yeah. if I if I dwell in that space, yeah. my spirit is uplifted, my spirit is relieved, my spirit feels spacious again. It's a yeah. different set. Yeah. Um yeah. I've also been reminded of, of Psalm 91, which is just such a beautiful psalm. The, 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 first, the first verse starts with, he who dwells. I, I, I haven't got past those three words. He who dwells. It's not he who occasionally visits. Yeah, it's, I love that. Sure. It's he who dwells in the presence of God. And yeah. we still think that God is far off, that he is distant. But sure. even at the revelation that God was near to him. Amen. And so where I've been, been dwelling for the last couple of days is just being reminded that when I, when I allow my worship to just bring me back to who God is, to remind myself of what he's done, that he's with me, he hasn't forgotten. And just that presence refreshes my soul breathe again and I can carry on with my day and I can interact with my kids and my wife and it's going to be okay so good so so good oh. I love you so oh. much I, I love what you said about breathing it's like um, there's actually a scripture somewhere I think it's in the Passion Translation that says God leads us, leads us into wide open spaces and I think that if we become aware of his presence and worship has a way of doing that for us in that it brings yeah. not that god's presence is not with us it is always with us but it makes you yes. aware that yes. he's with you exactly and it exactly. leads you into a spacious place where you can actually breathe because if you think about anxiety and stress and fear and worry it affects your breath yeah. it, af it affects yeah. that flow of breath and many times these psychologists and people that you go to for help in these areas, they will just give you breathing exercises. And it's mm, something it's so simple, but if you, it's the breath of God in us that keeps us alive. Mm. It's actually his breath. There's that song, it's your breath in my lungs. Mm. Yes. Um, so we pour out our praise. If yeah. we learn to breathe more, if we learn to become more of his presence and still ourselves, and worship has a healing way of doing that, yes. um, it changes how we breathe. It changes how we feel. It actually has power and authority over our emotions in that moment. Yeah. So I love that so much. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I know that, um, Janine, you have um, struggled a little bit in your life in the past. Um, for many years with depression and we've spoken a lot around this and you've shared your testimony before and so maybe mm. just speak a little bit about that um, you don't have to go in depth but just speak a little bit about just the he how worship has been a healing power and a tool in your life when it comes to the area of oppression heaviness the way that you think and just um, yeah tell us a little bit about that Awesome. Um, I, I, I love what Andrew said there. And I actually want to just pick up on one thing that he mentioned there. I said you, when you were saying that a few days ago, you were not doing so great. And your words were you've allowed um, things to get to you. And I think that that word allow is actually 
so powerful because you have to give something permission to have an effect on you. And that's your allowance. It's like when you take the outside circumstances and you take it into yourself, it's like you are accepting that. You are saying, I'm going to believe that. I'm going to accept that as the truth. And then what happens is that Pastor Joseph Prince says such a powerful thing. He says, um, when you walk in condemnation, you accept or um, when you believe a lie, you accept the consequences of that lie. And the consequences of a lie is actually how it makes us feel. And that brings condemnation. And it, it just, it's a downward spiral. Um, and I think that that's so powerful because we have um, the ability to say, I'm not going to receive that. I'm not going to take that for myself, you know. And yeah. I think that's where you were, Andrew, just kind of realizing, mm -hmm. wait a minute. I need to yeah. just um, put things straight here again, you know. And, yeah, um, yeah my journey has been definitely a case of all of that you know um i've struggled with depression i used to for about 18 years and i think that that was exactly the situation i was in where i was allowing my emotions and allowing what i'm experiencing or past experiences past failures even to really have a major effect on me and i think that we become so um serious with ourselves that um we don't allow we don't give ourselves grace to actually sometimes go through difficult times, you know, yes. and I love how grace is, grace is understanding the finished work. It's understanding that he has walked that journey for you already. And okay. so you don't need to, um, you don't need to take that on. You don't need to actually walk through it because he's already done that for you. And I think that that's what grace for emotions also stands for you know um so yes in my journey with um when i was going through those those years you might say well janine you were in worship the whole time why didn't anything change well actually what happened is that when i when there were moments that were very hectic i would find myself behind my piano like andrew um the same with andrew when just playing you know and i, I promise you every time i got up there from behind the piano, I felt elated. I felt different. Mm. There was a shift that happened. Mm. And um, we can probably scientifically try and explain it, but honestly, it's just the presence of God in your life that makes the difference. It brings a change. It shifts things. And yeah. often I would stand up from there and I would have new courage to take on things in my life. I would have um, a fresh vision of how am I going to um, um, tackle this issue? I would have um, just an excitement and a hope for yeah. tomorrow. And that is what the presence of God does. And I honestly believe it's because we stop allowing our emotions to dictate to us. And we allow the spirit of God to actually dictate to us what it is that he says about this specific situation, what he says about that over there. And there is so much power in that. And let me tell you this. The battle is really switching from that view that was negative, switching over to this view. That is the battle. Because you can get stuck there and go, but look how terrible it is. And yeah. honestly, I've, I've looked at it like yesterday is gone. All I have is today. And tomorrow is not secure if you don't have Jesus. And so I look at my emotions like they're in, in the past. So I will just leave them there and I will divorce myself from it and move on to what it is that God has for me today. So don't hold on to that, but actually stand in today with new hope, with new vision and allow God to actually dictate through his word and through his spirit, what your day will be like and what your emotions even will be like. So I think that that's so powerful. And that's honestly, I think a journey we never graduate from because there's always new things that come into our lives that we need to assess. Um, and the devil throws us curveballs. All of us, we go through things. And I mean, who would have thought we'd be in this situation where we are today, lockdown yeah. and, and, and going through what we're going through. And I really do believe that people that are, spending time in the word that are really keeping their eyes on Jesus, 
that are, they are going to come out of this lockdown stronger. I've been saying it from the beginning, and I really still believe that. If you look at the people of God, they rise up in these tough times. They, they advance. The kingdom of God advances all the time. Um, and so I think that it's really, really a powerful topic to be speaking about today. Amen. I love that. And Janine, I have like witnessed when you sit behind your piano and you just begin to worship, um, just how the entire atmosphere does shift. And I think that's the difference between um, just music in the world and putting songs on. I've got a neighbor here that just pumps the music all day. <laughs> and it's just so empty and it's such a noise. But I crank my worship music up in my house a little bit louder. And um, I just, I feel like worship and when it is attached to words, so music has power, but oh, when it's yes. attached to words that speak truth about the finished work of Jesus, it really does change the atmosphere in your home. It changes your heart. It really does feel like you can breathe. While you guys were talking, I was actually just sitting here like breathing deeply, <laughs> feeling the difference. <laughs> And I'm telling you, yes. it makes yeah. such a yes. difference when you can just calm yourself, fill yourself, focus on the word and the truth. And I really believe that worship has the power and authority to change the atmosphere, our perspective on things. And um, I, I just love everything we've spoken about. And I actually think that this is a series. It's not just a once off. I think that there's so much that we can dive into and pull apart um, in some of the things that you guys have been sharing. Yeah. And so maybe we'll do that in, in the next couple of weeks as well. Um, but I just wanted to um, maybe end off. And I think that what we can do also today is just pray over people that are Amen. struggling in their, in their emotions, that are struggling um, with anxiety and fear and worry over this time. And um, you know, to just encourage people that are watching, put worship music on in your home. Mm. Maybe you're not a musician. Maybe you're not a singer. Maybe you're not a worship leader. But you Doesn't know matter. what? People yeah. have been blessed with that gift that you can partake from. Put it on in your home. Switch it on louder than anything else. And drown out yeah. those emotions. Drown out those that anxiety. And watch what God does. And also, yeah. obviously, he's given us the power of the Holy Communion partaking of his promise, his, his um, body, his blood that was um, given for us during this time. Amen. And obviously we, we at Redemption, um, our pastors have made available, which has been so instrumental in just changing my day. And I know so many others, um, these daily devotionals that you can access yeah. that speaks truth and word and power at the moment into our so day good. so that also don't neglect that there's also that there's so much yeah. food to feed on right now and i just mm. wanted to share the scripture from and i just got it in my spirit while you guys were talking now and i just quickly looked it up it says it's philippians 4 verse 8 and it says finally brethren so brothers and sisters listen up whatever things are true whatever things are noble mm. whatever things oh, are just, I love that. whatever yes. things are pure Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, and we're receiving so many bad mm. reports right now, but whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue and anything praiseworthy, yes. meditate on these yes. things. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I so love good. that. So give your mind, set your mind on these That's things. That's it. Honestly, yeah. that is the tool. of the negative thoughts. The negative emotions. We, God made emotions. We are emotional yeah. beings. We are spirit, yeah. body, and soul. But don't let your soul navigate and dictate the course of your mm. day. Let your spirit man, your heart, <laughs> let your spirit man rise up during this time yes. and be yes. fed with good food so that that can navigate your course of your day. So the emotions yes. are not wrong. Amen. Feel all the feelings, but don't let them yes. dictate your day. Dictate. Bottom mm. line. Right. Let worship right. and the power of music um, overtake and sing louder over um, anything that you might be feeling today. Yes, um, yes. So, That's so powerful. Yes I've amen. got this one scripture. 
can I read it Go quickly? It. Actually, so uh, it was so great because we're speaking today about just when we give praise to God and the power in that. And there's a scripture in Hebrews verse, um, uh, chapter 13 um, from verse 33, 35. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> um, so we no longer offer up a steady stream of blood sacrifices. And this is referring to the old covenant. But through Jesus, we will offer up to God a steady stream of praise sacrifices. Oh, These so are the lambs we offer from our lips that celebrate his name. And I think Beautiful. that when we find ourselves in that place, a steady stream of praise and not a steady stream of complaining of worry. And, yeah. and worry and concern, but just that steady stream of praise and saying his name over our yeah. situation Amen. it is Amen. so Amen. so powerful it's good janine Amen. Oh, good. Oh, well thank you lord just for this time that we could have yes. together today father we just pray for every single person that may be watching that may be listening to this audio i thank you father god that our emotions are subjected to the word to the truth of what you say about us that during this uncertain time, Father, we would look to Jesus. We would put our eyes on the person of Jesus and focus on what he has done for us. Jesus, we will focus on your finished work and we will let that speak louder than anything right now. Thank you, Father God, that you've given us the tool of worship. You've given us this thing. You've created us in such a way that we are actually designed to worship. And so it is such a natural thing on the inside of us. And we choose, Father God, even today, to allow worship to rise up on the inside of us, to speak your name, to speak your truth, to sing out, to let your praise be on our lips today, Father God, that we, not, we invite you in to our situation, into our immediate situation right now. And we allow praise to rise up on the inside of us, mm. Father that will overtake any emotion, any anxiety, any depression, that it will just be cured in the name of Jesus by way yes. of lifting up our praise, lifting up our worship, lifting up the finished work of the cross. We will set our minds on those things. We will set our minds on the good report of what you say about our situation, of the truth that you um, have gone ahead of us already that there's no weapon that is formed that can stand, that can prosper. But Father God, um, your name and your word and who you are speaks louder than anything right now. And so we will just breathe as you lead us into this wide open space of worship. We will find ourselves at rest. We will find ourselves clear thinking. Father God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are working and the battle is yours. So yes. we rest in that today, Father, and let crank up the worship we will play the worship louder than anything else we will sing out in our hearts we will sing out with our voices with our instruments mm. and father god i thank you that you will bring healing into every area of our hearts our emotions our minds as they are stayed on you today in the name that is above every name the name of jesus and over these things we say amen amen amen, amen. Well, thank yes. you guys for joining today. Pleasure. We, we thank you um, just for sharing your hearts and being vulnerable. And we hope that this is going to be a series, first in a series, because I think there's so much to unpack. But, um, yeah, we just want to say to our church family, if you're watching today, we miss you and we love you. Yay. And we know that we're going to be together again and we're going to worship <laughs> together again because there's something about corporate worship. Woo! God just commands a blessing. Yeah. But, um yeah, me Love too. you guys, and um, let's sign off here. Amen. Yeah. Bless you, Annie. Thank you so much. Thanks, Anne. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bye. 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 Bye.